I call the member for Bruce. I rise to speak to this motion and listening to the minister, it's like an episode of Fantasy Island. The government's mismanagement of Centrelink is hurting millions of Australians. And it's important at the outset to state, Minister, that it is about the government. I will have no part, and we will have no part, in bashing public servants. Collectively, they do important work, and in a civilised society, a decent society, we need great public services and great public servants. And citizens have a right to expect efficient, effective service. The Centrelink workforce, as we've heard and as we know, is under terrible stress. Under this government, it is 1,000 days, Minister, and counting since you had the decency to have an EBA for your staff. And you can tell a lot about a government and a minister who turns his back on the debate by the way they treat their staff. I've spoken to people in my electorate about the threats to pay and conditions. That's a two-year wage freeze, Minister, a two-year wage freeze, largely falling on women, people with caring responsibilities in this Carers Week. But the most disgraceful part of your EBA policy is to remove the rights to wages and conditions and job flexibility for your own workforce. That's right, the rights to flexible working conditions for people with caring responsibilities. And I know I've been there. I've lived at times as a single parent. I know the importance of being able to leave at 3 p.m. as an industrial right, not at some whim of management being able to direct you to work on the other side of town, Minister. This is serious stuff for people in your agency, and this is your government's policy. You really can tell a lot about their response. So we see the cuts, we see the empty desks, we know the impossible workloads. For the community, we know what this means. It does mean extra waiting times. It does mean claims being lost. And you know who bears the burden when claims are lost? It's the recipient going to the back of the queue. I was speaking to the member for Longman earlier. Um, she recounted the story of a constituent in her electorate uh, with terminal brain cancer. He was diagnosed with four to six, perhaps a little longer, months to live. His wife quit work to care for him. Four months in, no carer's pension. No carer's pension, Minister. In two months, the prognosis is that man will be dead, still waiting for his wife to receive a carer's pension. But it's not just bad administration and cuts and mismanagement. There is a deliberate government policy, a cruel policy, of picking on the vulnerable. And I refer to the debate which has emerged and has certainly hit a raw nerve across Australia in relation to your government's policies around the disability support pension reviews. I fear to say it's the tip of the iceberg. And I, uh, you're aware of, because I know you spoke to the media about this case that I raised, I'd written to you, we'd tried with Centrelink, nothing happened. But then when the age journalist got onto you, all of a sudden, oh, nothing to see here, no, 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 we'll sort it out. Well, your welfare crackdown on fraud is a fraud. And I'd like to just mention some of the responses which we've had in relation to this case. Margot, my brother, a thalidomide victim, had to provide medical evidence that his arms hadn't magically grown back. Or James, I had a friend who's had his leg amputated and suffered some other serious health problems after an accident and was refused a DSP as Centrelink told him his legs will grow back. Of course, you may think these folk stories, but then I received a message from another constituent who recounted a tale to me of one of your colleagues, the member for Deakin, publicly denying at a public meeting that these amputee cases are even happening. That's right. At a public meeting on housing and homelessness, one of your government's members denied that these cases are even happening. Minister, I've been overwhelmed and I've had no response like it from the public in the last few days to these cases. And I agree with you, having been a public servant, not everything is perfect and sometimes mistakes are made. They can be honest mistakes and they can be rectified. And some of the complaints which we all get into Centrelink um, need to be fixed. And, you know, they're not fair. You can't pick on the staff. They're working in impossible conditions. But the government's policy in directing these reviews to the most vulnerable in the community, the hurt and fear from the families across Australia who are sitting there waiting for their turn to come, to have to try and get to the doctor, to find the out-of-pocket fees, to see a specialist, to prove the bleedingly obvious, has to stop. And I draw uh, the members of the House attention to an inquiry in my capacity as the Deputy Chair of the Parliament's Public Accounts and Audit Committee, 
We ticked off last week and it was announced yesterday that in November there will be a public hearing into the Auditor General's report that you referred to, a public hearing into the disability support pension and your department's administration of it. And I look forward to submissions from everyone across Australia, from every disability and every advocacy group, so we can get to the bottom of this. Yeah.